Hybrid Pharma welcomes you to the ocean of practical knowledge about small animal practice. That is Hybrid's YouTube channel. Dr. Chandrasekhar Sir is a renowned clinician having a clinical experience of more than 20 years in small animal practice. He has pursued a postgraduate degree and a doctorate in veterinary clinical medicine. Currently serving as a professor in the Department of Veterinary Clinical Medicine at MVC Chennai, he specializes in veterinary medical oncology and small animal internal medicine. Hatfield family extends a heartfelt gratitude to Dr. Chandrasekhar sir for sharing insightful content with our fellow veterinarians. Thank you sir. Dear participant, uh, today's uh, presentation is about stock and its management. There are different uh, type of categories: hypovolemic shock, loss of uh, fluid, then septic shock due to sepsis, then allergic dog due to allergy. So, cardiogenic dog due to cardiac-related ailment. So, the different categories of uh, shock we'll see one by one. These are all the some of the symptom of shock. You know, the animal become unconscious. There won't be any uh, movement. There won't be any response to the external stimuli, and uh, anxious look. And in case of hypovolemic shock, and uh, you can uh, one of the symptoms, you know, the loss of blood. You you will be able to see the pale mucus membranes. You can see. on the buccal mucosa you can also see on the conjunctival mucosa you can also see in the female mucus membrane right? if it is a female dog you can also see the uh, pale mucus membrane on the vaginal mucus these are all the area you have to consider another important thing you know you must have the powerful source of light uh, to identify the you know anemia in dogs physical examination irrespective of the shock physical examination is very very important quick examinations not from most to start from most to fail is very very important and then other uh, laboratory parameters starting with the uh, blood glucose lactone hemoglobin pcv rbc platelet count organ profile these are all uh, we need to do it bit uh, side uh, diagnostic kit that will give you uh, much information to the practicing veterinarian this is the biochemical analyzer there are a biochemical analyzer uh, uh, you know handheld machines available for the practice uh, in india money it cost about 3 to 4 lakhs you can buy you know you can uh, use it for the easy and the quick interpretations that will help you for your practice fluids is the shock due to loss of fluid and the keeping the fluid well in advance is very very important in the clinical practice and the blood loss you need to keep the blood if there is a fluid loss you need to give the sodium chloride the solution 0.9% or uh, ringus lactate uh, there is a metabolic acidosis so these fluids are very very important yeah actually uh, the uh, blood loss due to various occurrences uh, maybe due to external parasite internal parasite animal meet with an accident there will be a bleeding in the thoracic cavity there will be bleeding in the abdominal cavity so sometime uh, the bleeding disorder due to the uh, platelet defect uh, you know why are why are the defect vitamin k deficiency hemophilia a and b so we need to identify the cause for the bleeding disorders and then correct the problems epistaxis one of the symptoms in case of e kenis and uh, so the, in early shock kenis the blood vessel that are present on the nasal cavity is cause vasculitis and uh, those blood vessels not only uh, cause uh, the not only cause uh, blood leaking only in the nasal cavity you can also see the blood uh, rup, blood vessel rupture in the thoracic cavity resulting in hemothorax if the blood vessel rupture in the abdominal cavity is hemo abdomen those are all uh, you know it's a real emergency that has to be addressed uh, you know uh, as early as possible it is very common problem in indian practice one in three dogs they prone to get a hemoprotosal disease one in three dog you will get a emergency in the critical care unit one in three dog you go for multi organ failure so the knowledge on the hemoprotosal disease is very very important managing the cases of critically ill 
animals. These are all various causative factors, and then external parasite, internal parasite. They suck the blood from the uh, 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 you know pets, and it will make them anemic. Round worm, web worm, hook worm, tape worms. These are the common internal parasites. It will suck the blood from the pets, and it make them anemic. These are all the some of the coagulations uh, defect. You can see the echematic patches on the body surface. You can see the pinpoint uh, hemorrhages. And this is indicating that there is some uh, coagulation defect uh, that causes these bleeding disorders. There are, uh, you know, uh, uh, coagulation defect. And you can see the collection of blood in the anterior chamber of the eye. They call this hypema. So one of the symptoms you can get it in case of uh, early shock uh, If you detect the problem uh, in with the snap test or the blood spray examination or PCR examination or serological test, if you can treat them with the doxycycline tandem hypercalcic body weight, this problem can be reversed. So you can also see any uh, jugular uh, puncture if you are doing on the uh, jugular vein area. Animal with uh, hemostatic defect, you can see these type of red patches on the subcutaneous region. And those animals, better to avoid uh, all the intervention procedure because it will bleed and then they may uh, collapse. So you need to identify which one is causing the problem. Accordingly, that has to be addressed. It's again the IPMA, collection of blood in the uh, anterior chamber of the eye. Majority of the early shakenes will get many uh, hemostatic defect. Also, you'll get the rupture of the blood vessel in the eye. You'll get this problem. So, anemia, you all know that, you know, uh, this we can identify by looking at the mucous membrane, the pale mucous membrane on the conjunctival region uh, or in the penile region or vaginal mucous membrane. We can identify the anemic conditions and uh, there are certain criteria uh, you must follow or selecting the donor. You cannot take uh, blood from the sick animal. You cannot take blood from the patient affected with the hemoprotosome disease. You should not take blood from the less body weight and uh, there are the, you should have given all the vaccines. They should have a nearly a, you know more than 50 pound body weight and um, they should not have any murmur. A dog can uh, donate blood uh, five, to, five to six times a year. They, they should have given all the vaccines, this already I told. Uh, not on any medications other than heartworm and uh, tick medications. A free way of foodborne diseases and parasites and should be calm. That's very important. And uh, if the donor is an aggressive animal, you will not be able to collect the blood and you will not be able to save the critically ill animals. The responsibility of the veterinarians is like a pediatrician and you know they are uh, the family member in the house and uh, any sickness you need to address on time and any delay you know the entire house they upset uh, with their uh, problems so we need to update the skill and knowledge and uh, especially a uh, patient with the uh, hypovolemic stock due to blood loss and we can keep a couple of dogs the veterinarians yeah, i have a four or five cp per dog in my hospital uh, that is in the shelter. We periodically deworm, we periodically give uh, vaccinations and uh, free from all external internal parasites, we periodically deworm them. And uh, we are given all the rabies distemper, parvo shots, whatever is commercially available. We will also put the spot on, bravacto periodically. And another important thing is uh, periodically we also use the uh, antipic medication in the canal and the shelters. Uh, so by this process, our uh, pets uh, in the shelter is ready to do uh, treatment, uh, to collect the blood. And uh, any critically, any time we'll get, so there are 200 clinic in the city. Uh, you know, uh, I am the only person having the donor dog in my shelter. So any critically any animal control, my uh, pets in the shelter become the donor. We collect the blood and then we transfer to the uh, recipients. Some of the guidelines, what we follow, what is available globally, what we do in India, uh, those things I'll tell you in the subsequent slides.
Hatrick Pharma presents Hatcot MP Methyl Prednisolone Tablets The ultimate power of glucocorticoids in more potent form Hatcot MP is available as Methyl Prednisolone Tablets 8 mg Hatcot MP Tablets For placing order contact our sales team or WhatsApp 9837253817 or visit www.hatred.com There are several blood groups start from 1.0 1.2 3 4 5 6 7 8 9 10 11 12 13 like that but uh, the dog erythrocyte to 1.1 positive blood available in a dog that will cause transmission reaction that's what the 2022 article says so what you have to do is you need to identify the dog which are having dog erythrocyte 1.1 positive and those blood uh, you have to avoid giving to the recipient first transmission always safe in dogs because there is no all antibodies in the uh, dog blood but if it's a cat you need to do the typing uh, depends on the typing only you have to go for uh, transmissions in case of dog without identifying the blood group you are carrying out the in case of cat without doing uh, typing you are carrying out the transmission there will be a transmission reaction there are fatality there are other issues we can observe so the message is practicing with me better identify the dog erythrocyte 1.1 uh, negative blood group then collect the blood from the donor then you can transfer to the recipient state another thing you can also do a major matching you can collect the blood from donor red blood cell recipient serum You centrifuge and uh, take a little quantity and follow the guidelines and uh, put it on the slide. Look at it under the microscope. If you see agglomeration, there is a precipitation of the collected uh, your blood sample on the slide. It is indicating, you know, there is a agglomeration. That means the donated blood you are not supposed to transfuse to the recipients. That's the message. Yeah, there are the blood typing kits marketed by Alvidia, Iodex, and so many people they are marketing. It's available online. Only thing you to start a blood bank, you need to get the approval from the government of India. Uh, see, there are certain guidelines we need to follow to do the blood banking because the World Health Organization very strict because the patient, uh, human patients carrying a H virus, and if this become a potential donor, it will spread to all other uh, patients. so it is better uh, you know uh, get the approval from the competent authority then you can start the blood bank is about uh, 30 to 40 lakhs you need a start of blood bank so there are uh, house testing available marketed by rapid with h canine card also available alvidia quick uh, test card also available to identify dog in proof 1.1 there are uh, reference laboratories there are animal blood bank available all over the world when i was in canada there was a canadian animal blood bank available and when i was in michigan 2008 and I, uh, there is a blood bank available in the michigan city university in us so those centers you can contact if you are really interested uh, you can get the detail from them and then you can start your blood bank activity but you must get the approval from the uh, competent authorities without that you are not keep the blood bag in your clinic or in the hospital rapid blood cards also can be used is uh, the problem using the rapid blood card sometimes difficult to interpret with the severe anemia cases unable to use in the hot organization cases this is the site www.rapidbit.com you can uh, google it you can get all the detail online also you can pay the payment you can get the card you can make use for Uh, you are uh, diagnostic approach. This is a rapid blood card. You can see on the screen. No, the dog is also one point one positive control. You can see the precipitation. Negative control. You can see the uh, homogeneous blood groups in the area. The patient suppose uh, it's having the uh, uh, agglutinated blood. Then you can see the precipitation on the card. This is the way uh, you know you can make use of the rapid blood card, and then uh, can I in uh, blood typings? Uh, so always the quick test dog is it was one point one kit available. What you need to do is, and uh, there is a reference marker here, 
and after adding the conjugate and the blood if you dip it in the well and if you are getting the similar code on the strip that means the donated blood is having the dog enterocyte 1.1 positive so that blood you have to avoid giving to the recipient so that's the message and if you don't have the similar mark this is a control well mark if you don't get the similar mark in here that means uh, the blood the, the tested blood is 1.1 negative then uh, some of the guidelines uh, we need to follow while collecting the blood and uh, before collecting the blood uh, they should have a normal platelet count there should not be any coagulation defect and uh, they should not be having umft a and b and uh, normally they should have any bleeding disorder conditions they have bleeding disorder condition and there will be a uh, bleeding from the collection site and there will be subcutaneous hematoma and all those problem we can encounter so the message is uh, see that uh, you do a pt apt test fibrinogen level test and a platelet count test and uh, if possible you can also do a buccal mucosa bleeding time just uh, make a small incision on the buccal mucosa leave it uh, the patient normally 3 to 5 minutes it will clot and animal which are having bleeding disorder it will bleed even after the 5 minutes that is indicating that uh, those animals having bleeding disorder due to various factors and uh, the message is those animal better avoid uh, collecting the blood from the jugular vein because it is a major blood vessels if you poke this major blood vessel there will be a lot of bleeding and uh, many occasion you will not be able to control there will be a lot of subcutaneous bleeding that will also cause compression on the trachea there will be a difficulty in breathing dyspnea and so many other emergency episode you can encounter and um, so better uh, you know they are having normal pt aptt fibrinogen level and uh, normal platelet count and those animal uh, they should have hemoglobin uh, you know Uh, at least a 10 uh, gram per deciliter pcb is about uh, 30 to 40 and rbc uh, 5 to 6 million per cubic milliliter and those criteria if the animal is having now those uh, and that should be calm we told you all the already the some of the guidelines for selecting the donor dog and you must follow the guidelines if you follow the guidelines and also get the consent from the owner because the, the they are bringing pet parents if they are bringing the dog usually donating blood it will not be a problem to the donor but the some occasions uh, if already the animal is having some ailment for example uh, a dilated cardiomyopathy or if they are having a, uh, you know uh, other organ problems like hepatic or renal failure and all those things uh, if you don't screen and those animal you know uh, if for example if a case of a dcm cases and uh, someone is holding very tight closing the mouth in the image also you can see someone is closing the mouth and uh, restraining the scruff of the neck another person helping you to collecting the blood uh, raising the jugular vein so one more person is collecting it is the team work a single man uh, we cannot perform though the jugular vein is superficial and uh, single man if you perform no it is difficult so always uh, better have a team trained team should be available the trained team no we can collect the blood from the jugular vein very easily while collecting also it should be calm and quiet and uh, uh, the collected blood uniformly it should mix with the anticoagulants that is available in the blood bag now you can see the flow of blood from the jugular vein and uh, similarly uh, the feline blood typing i told you know is very very important because there is a allo antibodies present in the cat blood it will cause very serious transmission reactions uh, similarly you know the alvedia quick test to identify a and b uh, the kit is available so what you have to do is you know already i told you the conjugate and blood you have to add and if the animal donated tested blood is having a a group you can get a marking here a and b there is a reference code available Uh, next to the control well and if it is having a, another code that means ab blood groups if you have only one here that means b blood group so a means here b means here if you get a two marking on the strip that means ab blood groups and then it is similar to dog and uh, cat also 
the donor should have some criteria it should be fit and healthy uh, up to date with the flea and the deworming medication it should be aged between 1 to 10 years weight should be more than 4 kg there should not be any uh, ill health uh, problems uh, up to date with vaccinations it should not be with any medications it should not have traveled abroad we don't know some of the disease they may bring uh, never had a blood transfusion before these are all the some of the criteria normally you should follow while selecting the feline blood donor and uh, my opinion keeping the four five cats uh, more than 4 kg body weight is not a problem because they occupy less space so that you know you can uh, periodically screen them you can identify the blood grouping so when there is a need arise uh, checking the blood group of the recipient so that get the consent from the owner then you can go on. there are periodic blood uh, bank you can use for uh, collection and uh, administrations and uh, so that you know the uh, feline uh, blood transfusion will be easier and if you have uh, you, your own uh, uh, donors in your hospital or you keep it as a blood donor programs so the pet parents also they can bring and then donate the blood but uh, the problem is if the pet uh, having issue after the blood transfusion due to various other problem happened after the blood transfusion they blame the transmission procedure so if you have uh, everything under your roof under your control and you will not have any problems provided you should get the approval from the competent authority so then only you can run the keep the blood back and then regarding the collection of the blood in cats there are uh, commercial closed collection systems normally they follow and uh, so what they do you know they take the butterfly catheters 30 ml syringe three way stop cock satellite collection bag and then uh, this is uh, coming under the uh, you know closed collection system there are open collection system uh, 30 ml syringe with the 19 gauge butterfly needle 1 ml cpd solution for uh, 9 ml of blood every 9 ml of blood you are collecting 1 ml of cpd solution or citrate you have to take then only the collected blood it won't uh, coagulate closed collection system containing cpda that is cpda means uh, citrate phosphate dextrose adenine is an anticoagulant and uh, so you can collect in a closed manner and then you can tra- transfer to the another satellite bag and then trend you can see here blood collections uh, someone uh, restrained the animal save the area apply some antiseptic on the jugular site jugular vein is superficial it's very easy but only thing you know little bit of movement also the catheter can go into subcutaneous region and uh, then it will become problems so another thing you see here there is a butterfly needle they introduced and uh, there is a three way tap they are collecting the blood in the syringe so then they transfer once they are collecting they transfer it to the blood bag and similarly whatever you need no because the blood bag is having cpd solution so whatever the quantity you need for a transfusion to the recipient the required quantity you can withdraw through the another port available in the blood bag you can see the seven ports Uh, one end you know we can collect and then transfuse this area we are uh, sending the blood to the blood bag after that if i need a blood for a 2 kg body weight patients probably i need 20 ml of blood i can collect it from with the attached syringe i can transfer it to the recipient so that's the way that uh, how blood is it blood collection system uh, once you collected uh, normally they weigh the blood bag and then uh, uh, there will be a sealing also once they collected and uh, you need to seal the tubing system there are sealer available uh, then another uh, thing you know component therapy suppose the parent uh, patients uh, ailing with uh, for example you take a uh, patient uh, having a cardiac problems or the renal problems the cardiac problems naturally uh, they may be having cardiogenic shock 
and those patients uh, if you are correct they are anemic also cardiac failure patients having anemia if they need only a rbc give only rbc instead of giving whole blood so if you give whole blood then it become a volume overload this volume overload uh, you know it will cause discomfort to the patients the message is patient with the congestive heart failure patient with the renal failure and it will become volume overload to the patients so what you need to do is uh if they need uh, only the required blood cells they need rbc give rbc they need wbc give the wbc if they need platelet give platelets this is called comparant therapy this comparant therapy and uh, will be of more useful in patient with uh, congestive heart failure or renal failure patients so the other no that the process called the whole blood divided to various comparant of the blood they call it as comparant therapy in the comparant therapy you know uh, the cell uh, blood uh, blood contain various component like you have a red blood cells you have a uh, white blood cell your platelets and uh, you have plasma and these are all the component of the various blood so uh, normally uh, the use of collection post collection system and the satellite bag they use centrifugation of fresh whole blood within 8 hours they do you can separate pray a pack of red blood cells and then platelet rich plasma you can take um, and then cryo precipitate you can also collect uh, fresh frozen plasma cryo precipitate for plasma various this are the various component of the uh, blood bank administration you can also through with the intravenous route you can also through intravenous route intravenous route you know uh, with the animal doesn't have a, a severe hypovolemia you can raise the cephalic vein you can raise the jugular vein you can raise the normally concentrate the peripheral vessels cephalic or saphenous vein many time it will become challenging animal with severe hypovolemic shock in those patients what we need to do is uh, you can go for central line central line you know is very simple process but the only thing is you should be trained in putting the iv line uh, on the jugular vein uh, you could have attempted five ten cases then it will become easy then intraosseous so most important route you know very effectively used in pediatric patients most human doctor they attempt this because uh, their pediatric pediatric patient also uh, lot of fluid available in the child and the raising the peripheral blood vessel become challenging so the central line also sometimes challenging patient with hypovolemic shocks so what they do they try with the intraosseous route our patient the intraosseous route recommendations we use the normal my present site head of the femur the prochondric force of the femur in the back leg i prefer because easy for me to hold and save the area apply some antiseptic then uh, infiltrate lign again then uh, required quantity of needle i introduce um then i will administer the blood or administer the fluid i will administer the drug depends upon the emergency criteria so uh, sometime you know that uh, intraosseous needle it get approved at that time you know what you need to do is some small quantity of heparin loaded saline you take and then administer and uh, the any cortical bone or tissues or any uh, material which accumulated in the needle get discharged then it is easy for you to uh, administer you can also they say 0.9% uh, sodium chloride warm sodium chloride you uh, to uh, you can add to packed rbc to increase the bolus speed in emergency so suppose uh, it's in the chill condition no you can add a warm uh, 0.9% sodium chloride to pack the rbc it increase the bolus uh, speed in case of emergency and uh, this is the buccal mucosa bleeding tanks uh, you know there's a bp blade if they make incision on the buccal mucosa they allowed to bleed normally you know uh, it will clot within 5 to 10 minutes it is taking longer time to stop then the animal is having clot a bleeding disorder that has to be addressed identify the cause and then correct on those cases animal with uh, bleeding disorders to it coagulation defect animal with uh, ecchematic patches due to coagulation defect 
அனிமல் வித் பிளேட்லெட் டிசார்டர் இல்லை த்ராம்போசைட்டிக்னியா அண்ட் இஃப் யூ கிவ் த ஹோல் பிளட் யூனோ தட் வில் பிகம் லைஃப் சேவிங் ப்ரொசீஜர் இன் கேஸ் ஆஃப் அனிமல் வித் பிளாட் இன்ஃபெக்டட் டிஃபெக்ட் அண்ட் ஆல்சோ இன் கேஸ் ஆஃப் ரிசீவிங் you can see the collected blood hanging on the raised surfaces and then it will go in the uh, there is a uh, hatred pharma presents headzine hydroxyzine tablets wonderful choice for histamine mediated pruritic and allergic conditions in dogs and cats headzine is available in the following formats headzine 25 tablets and hit sign 50 tablets for pacing order contact our sales team or whatsapp 9837253817 or visit www.hatwell.com uh, infusion pump through that uh, they fix the rate and then it goes to the patients uh, after fixing the catheter no the blood is going you can see the vital sign monitor and they kept in a undisturbed area there will be oxygen and then there will be warmer also provision available in all these stages so in this hypothermia this uh, warmer can take it and uh, other uh, you know uh, infusion from uh, vital sign monitor and you can also see the proper bedding and this bedding is very very important otherwise uh, most of the cages in the whole world in veterinary patients especially small and medium emergency critical care unit they keep it in a stainless steel the stainless steel you know air conditioned room and the temperature of the stainless steel is also very low already animal with hypovolemic shock and uh, naturally the hypovolemic shock end up with hypothermia hypothermia and the hypoglycemia hypoglycemia end up with multi organ failure death so the proper uh, bedding is very very important uh, that will keep the uh, uh, you know the patient in a comfortable position and uh, you can do all your procedure uh, as and when needed so that's all about the uh, hypovolemic stock due to blood loss and the fluid loss and we told you the the selection of the donor we told you the dog and cat uh, what are the procedure that they follow and then uh, what are the selection criteria what are the bigger problems and uh, another important thing is um, there are a lot of side effect the side effect of the uh, blood administration in initially 5 uh, to 10 minutes uh, you have to observe it has to be given very slowly suppose uh, if you see the symptoms like vomiting diarrhea and the erythematous patches the allergic eruption all over the body restlessness convulsions high temperature so that means you have to slow down or stop the transmission if it is a epilepsy give a diazepamide if it is allergic eruptions give adrenaline or chlorpheniramate or steroid or if it is a vomiting, a drugs. So, the vomiting give anti vomit drugs so these are all the if it is the temper having high temperature give a, 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 a broad spectrum bactericidal antibiotic so that you can um uh, uh, reverse the uh, problems you can avoid the bad events so that's all about the whole information available all over the world about the uh, blood banking procedure in managing the case of hypovolemic shock due to blood loss cardiogenic shocks so uh, there is a shock due to uh, cardiac related problem that is the reason they may name the word as a cardiogenic shocks we'll see one by one see cardiogenic shock means it is a inadequate cellular metabolism second into cardiac dysfunction despite ad- adequate intravascular value there may be adequate intravascular value but uh, inadequate cellular metabolism second into cardiac dysfunction that will develop cardiogenic shock how we develop what are the protocol what are the clinical signs how we have to diagnose what is the treatment available 
globally, we can see one by one. Cardiac output is equal to stroke volume multiplied with the heart rate. This can be a reduction in either stroke volume or a heart rate can therefore lead to reduction in the cardiac output. Reduction in stroke volume, compensatory increase in the heart rate due to baroreceptor mediated sympathetic stimulation, preserved blood pressure and tissue perfusion. When stroke volume cannot be compensated by further increase in heart rate, that reduces the cardiac output and forward flow failure. This is the pathway wherein the animal develop a cardiogenic shock. And uh, there are uh, different uh, dysfunctions. One is maybe the contractile problems or there may be a problem with the uh, dilatation problems uh, or maybe a dystolic problem. Uh, there will be a broadly arrhythmias or uh, it can be a tachyarrhythmia also. So, systolic dysfunctions, so what are the uh, thumb rules? So, one of the thing is the contractile dysfunction can be due to failure of contractibility or it can be a mechanical failure. Diastolic dysfunction, it's a inadequate ventricular filling. There is a uh, the, the dilatation should come like this. This uh, function getting interfered due to cardiac tamponade. There's the heart, it has to dilate, and the dilatation getting interfered, there is an accumulation of fluid around the, between the myocardium and the pericardium. This fluid interfere with the, uh, you know, dilatations. Then sometime hypertrophic cardio might be. Hypertrophic cardio might be thickened, thickened wall, interventricular symptoms. This will also interfere with the uh, di uh, diastole. And if there is a tachycardia, imagine normally heart has to contract and send the blood for circulation. If it is a keep beating more, uh, that they call it as tachycardia, if they are keep on beating, that means inadequate blood is supplies to the vital organs. So it will result in uh, other shock and other various other uh, problems at the cellular level. Similarly, uh, the systolic function, normally heart has to contract and relax. And then the contraction itself be a problem due to various reasons, then uh, it's, uh, that has to be corrected. And also uh, the problem due to mechanical failure. Bradyarrhythmia, there is a bradycardia that causes arrhythmias. So there are various reasons animal show bradyarrhythmia that you can easily identify with your ECG. And uh, what are the clinical signs in case of uh, Animal with the cardiogenic shock. Important sign in case of um, cardiogenic shock is the uh, less perfusion. They call it as hypoperfusion. When there is a less perfusion, you can also see in ca cardiogenic shock there will be a change in mentations and there will be a depression, they will be unresponsive, and there will be disorientations because lack of blood. Uh, in the circulations, this problem you can encounter because less amount of perfusions. Extremities are cold, mucous membrane pale, and uh, there will be a prolonged capillary, capillary refilling time. Heart rate elevated, except in uh, primary blood arrhythmia. Renal blood flow reduced, result in azotemia, with or without oliguria and anuria. Anuria, no urine, only urea reduced the quantity of urine. Less of uh, gastrointestinal perfusions, you will have um, vomiting and hemorrhagic diarrhea. So these are all the some of the clinical signs in case of a patient with cardiogenic shock. So what uh, as a veterinarian you have to do, you have to carefully ask it at the heart and left. Synchronize peripheral pulse palpation on the cardiac ulcer. This is uh, every heart rate, there should be a pulse rate. If the heart rate is more, pulse rate is less, they call it pulse deficient. This is one of the simple tests. You don't need costly equipment. You need to have a stethoscope. Uh, then uh, keep one finger on the femoral area. Auscultate the heart with your stethoscope. That can be able to detect the 
you know the if the if the animal is having pulse deficiency you can easily diagnose venous blood gas analysis i have been telling you in more majority of my presentation of the critical care topic it is a important equipment it's a bedside diagnostic uh, equipment you you need to draw only a small quantity of blood advantage is all other test you need more blood you need to have a small quantity of blood with the small quantity by animal already anemic no you collect more amount of blood that's also uh, face uh, uh, crisis so uh, with this uh, blood gas analysis equipment you uh, by 3 to 4 lakhs you get the blood gas there are various company available in the world and uh, select a good company and correct uh, take small quantity of blood and then you will have to take in a epernized uh, syringe insulin syringe then load it on the cartridges and then it will take a few minutes and the loading also it should not be more blood loading it should not be less blood loading if uh, more or less bleeding the patient will not read the result it will say less amount of blood or more amount of blood it will sense and it will tell us so if you can uh, perform with the more number of cases you will be in a position to uh, you know do it uh, perfectly the perfection will come if you handle more number of cases and with that you no know, you can identify uh, less amount of bicarbonate that is metabolic acidosis and you can also identify the saturated oxygen level in the blood and also in the artery this will help us to identify uh, you know whether the animal is in a hypoxic shock either it needs oxygen or not we can identify and then also we can identify the lactic acidosis uh, there are various uh, parameters available on the uh, blood gas machines you can also identify the blood urine hydrogen creatinine you can identify the electrolyte sodium calcium uh, and uh, chloride uh, potassium all those things you can also identify the ph uh, pao2 pco2 bicarbonate and uh, you can also collect from the venous blood and the venous blood no the saturated oxygen level will be less compared to arterial blood the comparison between the arterial blood and the venous blood when you collect the blood collection from an artery it will be a bright red if you if you collected the blood from the venous area it will be a dark blood and uh, so there are technique we need to follow if you are collecting femoral artery or the vein you keep your finger on the femoral artery of the vein area and naturally femoral artery they have a dominant pulsation compared to the vein so the dominant pulsation area immobilize then introduce the epernized uh, insulin syringe loaded with uh, pre loaded with uh, heparin so the small quantity uh, with that technique only you can avoid the clotting in the syringe just introduce and collect the blood and then uh, the process which i told you know you can do it there are printer small printer available with that no you can take print out and uh, have your permanent record uh, there are two things one is uh, there are there are many thing you can do one is with the oxygen low you can give oxygen whether the bicarbonate is less you can administer the is a metabolic as you can administer bicarbonate the blood glucose less you can administer blood glucose a lactate is high you can tell the prognosis or potassium high you can treat them with the insulin the calcium uh, uh, gluconate uh, 10% calcium gluconate insulin and sodium bicarbonate all those things can be given and 20% dextrose in case of hyperkalemia and the calcium hypocalcemia you can administer 10% calcium gluconate one ml every kilo body weight and then uh, hypokalemia less potassium you can add a potassium to the normal syringe and then administer uh, so the blood gases metabolic profile test all the electrolytes you can estimate within 2 uh, minutes job will be over uh, you know you can do the meaningful job to the patient but all those things you know is possible uh, you can do a meaningful job provided you have to correct the primary problem and then uh, then uh, you know the pco2 you know able to tell about the respiratory acidosis or alkalosis status 
when you have a ecg uh, you know you can identify the sinus tachycardia bradyarrhythmia or any conduction defect or chamber enlargement all those things quickly you can make out and uh, the idea of in case of cardiogenic shock chamber enlargement heart rate high or low electrolyte abnormality the p p t wave normally uh, less than the r wave if it is half of the r wave then it's a case of hyperkalemia and uh, similarly the pqrs take up as minimally you should present uh, the normal heart rate range from 70 to 150 and uh, you know the uh, uh, small breed dog it can go up to 70 to 180 and uh, puppies from 70 to 220 so anything less than 70 is bradycardia anything more than the uh, you know prescribed the heart rate in various breed like small thai breed and puppies is we call it as tachycardia so the, all those things you can from any arrhythmia problem in the animal you can make out normally the p wave tell you about the atrial uh, uh, you know the depolarization r amplitude qrs complex tell you about ventricular depolarization t wave is tell you about the ventricular repolarization the pqrs complex uniformly should present on the papers and uh, if it is a length and width of the p amplitude is high by atrial enlargement Uh, length alone is high right atrial enlargement width alone is the high, uh, you know uh, left atrial enlargement both the length and width are high is a by atrial enlargement then hard amplitude there are certain guidelines given less than 25 kg body weight uh, 2 mV and then if the uh, more than 25 kg body weight they should have a 3 mV Hatrick Pharma presents Hatcot MP methyl prednisolone tablets the ultimate power of glucocorticoids in more potent form Hatcot MP is available as methyl prednisolone tablets 8 mg Hatcot MP tablets For placing order contact our sales team or WhatsApp 9837253817 or visit www.hatred.com have a 3 mV size anything more than this uh, prescribed the norms they can the left to left ventricular enlargement normally s and t should travel a small distance and then we it will form a t wave so instead of uh, st traveling straight and it is bending you know that is called a st coving and human patients undergo under, you know undergoing some myocardial ischemia this st area alone uh, you will have changes maybe a st depression or st elevation that is indicating that there is a myocardial hypoxia or myocardial damage on those cases human physician will refer to the cardiologist immediately the more they delay the more uh, cardiac muscle damage and uh, less perfusions uh, ischemia than death of the patients very very important the st coving area in case of human uh, patients with the uh, cardiac issues and uh, similarly electrolyte abnormality in t wave normally you want that of the r wave if it is half of the r wave or three for the r wave of t indicating hyperkalemia so all those things we can uh, make out then pr interval prolongation first degree av block and then if you have a two p wave then qrs complex then uh, you know uh, you can see only the p waves and the qrs complex occasionally you will get there. that you will get it in case of second degree av block you see a multiple p waves occasionally you get the qrs complex is called third degree av block and those cases second degree av block third degree av block and all like if you are able to see the okay, multiple p waves and occasionally getting qrs complex you try with the atropine and even after giving administered atropine if you are not able to get the complex uniformly on the ecg strips eh, it those cases is the right choice for your pacemaker implantation pacemaker implantations you can do with the jugular and then you can um, the cardiac facing the pacemaker it administered is fixed in the right atrium the externally the suture you can make it wrap it up and uh, when there is a less heart rate the pacemaker it will uh, send the impulses it will make them recognize if the high heart beat it will send the impulses it will bring them to normal control that's the way the pacemaker uh, playing an important role there are places human patients all these activity get connected with the bluetooth uh, of the patients and also to the cardiologist they read and then they interpret nowadays you know the uh, it knowledge also very important in managing the case of uh, cardiac failure patients and then cyst radiograph is also uh, helps to tell you uh, any abnormality of the cardiac cell out and then uh, 
echocardiography findings it will able to tell you that the la by a ratio to tell you about the uh, you know the atrial enlargement normally it less than 1.6 the ratio left atrium divided by aorta is more than that the left atrial enlargement can be due to mitral valve disease it can also be due to uh, uh, dilated cardiomyopathy if the smaller breed la by a ratio more than 1.6 is a mitral valve disease bigger dog giant breed dogs la by a ratio is more than 1.6 so probably it's in dcm and then uh, if you have a color doppler in your practice just uh, smaller breed uh, look at the mitral valve whether it's having thickening whether it's stenosed and uh, by uh, clicking the color code doppler on the mitral valve you can able to appreciate the animal with the regurgitation you can see the mosaic pattern similarly in case of dcm there will be a uh, dilated ventricle and uh, you press the cfm on the monitor you can able to see the mosaic patterns able to tell you about the uh, dilated ventricles failure of contralateral artery you will get in case of dilated cardiomyopathy in case of uh, sepsis myocardial dysfunction peak at the onset of sepsis endomyocardial is a rare condition occur several days after the neuter in cats uh, endocardium uh, normally you know hyperacute histopathology you know neutrophilic infiltration and uh, fibroplasia you can observe uh, you know uh, patient with uh, uh, all this endomyocarditis myocardial infection common cause in human rare in dog and cat dilated cardiomyopathy is uh, everything we told uh, you know you can diagnose uh, with your x ray itself uh, you can appreciate the globoid appearance of the heart normally it is a conical shape uh, it should occupy only the within 3d if they are occupying more than 3d uh, that itself a clue and then if you have the uh, you, you calculate the vector ball r score formula if it is more than 10.5 uh, uh, then you can this uh, suspect uh, there is a dilated cardiomyopathy then echo cardiography is a simple and easy test to keep the probe on the chest after palpating the apex beat of the heart uh, normal uh, la by a ratio told you the la by a ratio more than 1.6 in a bigger dog and the definitely that may be having a left atrial uh, definitely uh, it's having left atrial enlargement uh, naturally it have a dilated cardiomyopathy common in case of doberman picture boxer great dane labrador american cocker spaniel the bigger dog they prone to develop dilated cardiomyopathy rare in cats except in car deficiency disease in uh, myocardial contractility decrease in stroke value and coronary failure and then compensatory mechanism renin angiotensin system sympathetic nervous systems you know also getting activated in this process with this no there will be retention of sodium and water that will uh, also increase the intravascular value eccentric hypothermia occur secondary to cardiac myocardial stretch that also can cause a direct cardiomyopathy this compensatory mechanism will maintain cardiac output until myocardial failure becomes severe that the cardiac sensor cannot sustain further vein enlargement any further further increase in intravascular volume due to inter increase the end diastolic pressure increased end diastolic will lead to increase the pulmonary capillary hydrostatic pressure cardiogenic pulmonary edema or ascites this is the pathway right side artery will have ascites left side artery will have pulmonary edema a nocturnal cough abducted elbow all those things will dyspnea this sign we can infer diastolic failure result in decreased preload and therefore reduced stroke volume if animal able not not able to maintain cardiac output it increased the heart rate cardiogenic shock ensues common cause uh decreased preload is hypovolemia which may be corrected by restoration of intravascular value and therefore is not uh, truly cardiogenic other causes physical restriction uh, due to cardiac tamperate inability of the myocardium to relax due to uh, hypertrophic cardiomyopathy inadequate time for filling due to tachycardia these are all we explained well in advance cardiac tamperate is nothing but it uh, happen due to pericardial effusion occur secondary to pericardial effusion decreased diastolic ventricular flow will lead to decreased stroke volume and cardiac output there will be a reflex tachycardia in an attempt to maintain normal tension and tissue perfusion increased heart rate not sufficient hypotension result cardiac oscillations you know quite absent heart sound in case of 
the message to the practitioner animal with the pericardial effusion you ask it at the heart you will not able to get the sound even if you get the sound the sound will be a minimum sound so that itself will giving a clue about the pericardial effusion and those cases you subject them for x ray x ray you can see the globoid appearance and uh, when you do an echo the in between the myocardium and pericardium small quantity of fluid but in case of pericardial effusion you can see the huge quantity of fluid and the myocardium floating in the available pericardial fluid you can easily diagnose other cases then cardiac the confirmation by ultrasonography all this informations a uh, reduced cardiac output decreased the tissue perfusion and resulted in lactic acidosis so the lactic acidosis pathophysiology because of reduced uh, uh, blood supply from the heart and uh, reduced the blood availability of the tissue then chronic effusion patient have a decreased sodium and increased potential of condensation from a reduced effective circulatory volume uh, that's also cause a induced pseudo hyperadrenopathy and then um, emergency pericardial central allow for normal ventricular feed so you need to approach on the right side uh, fifth precaution phase you have to sedate the animal with uh, safer antibiotics butrofenol or butrofenol drugs and then you know <coughs> save the area infiltrate liquid again then pericardial central needle you use approach on the right side <coughs> you must have ecg if the, the collected blood is clotting that means blood if the collected blood it doesn't clot that is the pericardial plane so that's we have to compare uh, the pericardial center in patient with uh, coagulopathy or a dog with uh, you know uh, other bleeding disorder the pericardial center is contraindicated contraindication of pericardial center is coagulopathy cases bleeding disorder you are not supposed to do the pericardial center hypertrophic cardiac is the thickening of the intraventricular wall muscles and uh, uh, you know uh, due to if they have a result in failure of normal in diastole can occur secondary to in, intrinsic inability of the myocardium to relax because of the thick musculature it cannot relax common in feline cardiac disease character by constant hypertrophy of the ventricular myocardium decreased in diastolic ventricular volume and then uh, stroke volume and the cardiac output so activation of neurohormonal mechanism to combat it because of this uh, reduced uh, perfusion and the neurohormonal mechanism uh, you know getting activated uh, systolic uh, function remains normal in cat with the congestive heart failure that receive over jealous diuretic therapy can progress easily to hypovolemic shock cat with the in stage hypertrophic cardiomyopathy severely impaired systolic function function so treatment you can use uh, beta blocker or calcium channel antagonist Uh, you can uh, maintain the patient with the comfort taki arrhythmia increased heart rate result in arrhythmias and then uh, it result in inadequate ventricular activity occur at the elevated heart rate tachycardia heart rate more than 200 beats per minute inadequate time for diastolic clean to occur before the systole decreased in diastolic volume stroke volume and the cardiac output causes supraventricular tachycardia primary cardiac disease or cardiac manifestation of other systemic disease uh, you have treatment calcium channel antagonist and beta blocker is the line of treatment bradi arrhythmia less heart rate result in heart arrhythmias severe bradi decrease in cardiac output high degree uh, uh, second degree av block third degree av block severe six and i syndrome <coughs> you will have bradi arrhythmia there is a av nodal conduction does not occur external nodal heart rate 40 to 60 beats per minute ectopic beat 20 to 40 beats per minute cat is a cat with third degree av block typically have a higher ventricular escape rhythm of 100 to 140 beats per minute less commonly present for cardiogenic shock and the diagnosis based on clinical sign and electrocardiography treatment you can try with the beta agonist isoprotonol or dopamine or cri artificial cardiac fusion i told you second degree av block third degree av block even after your atrial administration if you don't correct the this second degree or third degree of block you better go for cardiac artificial cardiac phase uh, placing a temporary catheter this we will have it in a separate class uh, this uh, uh, you know the whole information we got through smart medical critical care medicines <coughs> cardiac engineering law written by andrew j brown and debra c mendel you can also see the pericardial synthesis procedure 
Hatred Pharma presents Headzine Hydroxyzine Tablets Wonderful choice for histamine mediated pruritic and allergic conditions in dogs and cats Headzine is available in the following formats Headzine 25 tablets and Headzine 50 tablets For placing order contact our sales team or WhatsApp 9837253817 or visit www.hatwell.com now you can see uh, this is the site right side we are approaching uh, fifth intercostal space and after infiltrating the liver again shave the area apply some antiseptic then pericardial sentence needle we are introducing with the guidelines for echocardiography therapy and then once you touches the pericardium you ought to withdraw the needle catheter roll should go inside If it touches the myocardium, you will not see the pericardial number. You will see the arrhythmias on the ECG. That means you, you are not supposed to proceed further. Not to withdraw and keep it in the pericardial area. If the collected blood as uh, doesn't clot, that means uh, it's a pericardial fluid. If it is clotting, means uh, uh, blood. So the contraindication is animal with the bleeding withdraw that platelet less amount of platelet. You are not supposed to do these procedures. then uh, there are baro receptor and then uh, the sympathetic nervous systems these uh, you know uh, control the rapid uh, movement to, uh, and maintain the blood pressure and then you see the decreasing blood pressure causes uh, baro receptors send a fewer impulse to the cardiovascular center in the central nervous system that's want to increase the sympathetic output and then increased the cardiac output result in vaso constriction increased blood pressure so when there is a drop in blood pressure the baro receptor send the signal signal to the central nervous system and then by activating the sympathetic nervous system in turn it result in more amount of cardiac output that result in vaso constriction result in blood pressures so this is the pathway and then uh, the baro receptor and the sympathetic nervous systems and you can see in the you know pictures uh, you know where the bar carotid bar receptor and uh, you can see the hyotic bar receptors uh, and similarly hyotic chemo receptors in the carotid bar chemo receptor this bar receptor send the signal when there is a less amount of blood in the blood vessel it will signal send the signal to the central nervous system or the brain so brain you know again it will give a signal to the heart uh, you know uh, request them to uh, beat more and uh, if it is beating more and uh, uh, that result in uh, more amount of cardiac output and the, which in turn result in vaso constriction result in increased blood pressure this is the pathophysiology of the importance of baro receptor and sympathetic nervous system similarly renin angiosynthetic tension mechanism how the sodium and the water absorption and retention takes place when there is any uh, problem in the kidney and liver and also in the uh, lung when there is a less uh, perfusion when there is a less uh, perfusion kidney it will secrete renin and then the re- uh, renin you know converted to angiotensin you know, uh, with the help of uh, you know liver and then lung with the available of angiotensin converting enzyme enzyme the angiotensin 1 see when there is a less amount of blood kidney secreting renin with the angiotensin uh, conversion the renin converted to angiotensin 1 in the lung this angiotensin 1 converted into angiotensin 2 with the available angiotensin converting enzyme and this causes peripheral vaso constriction the angiotensin 2 uh, also act on the adrenal gland and result in uh, absorption of sodium and water result in edema so the sodium and the water uh, accumulation in the cell we can prevent uh, by adding angiotensin converting enzyme incubators so once you incubate this enzyme this pathway can be prevented so the edema can be uh, avoid and then uh, so you can uh, see when the less amount of perfusion in the kidney how the renin is getting secreted 
how the liver playing an important role uh, play, uh, important role in converting angiotensin 1 uh, from the lung you know how it is converted into angiotensin 2 so that was the one is causes potent vasoconstriction all your angiotensin converting enzyme to be act here so thereby it will causes uh, vasodilatation thereby it prevent the edema at uh, at the various body parts the fashion will come up so this is the pathway then mal resubition of blood flow anaphylactic shock is acute life threatening hypersensitive reactions mainly anaphylactic shock is allergic reaction suppose i have seen dog allergic to prednisolone i have seen dog allergic to chlorpheniramine i seen allergic to your augmentin uh, so there are many drugs that causes allergic to vaccines and accidentally the vaccine is entered the blood vessel some of them they prone to develop uh, the normal issue become suppressed sometimes there are blood vessel in the suppressed it is going accidentally in the blood vessel uh, there is a possibility you know the animal develop anaphylactic shock so when there is a allergy reaction there will be massive vasodilation so a lot of uh, release of mediator that will increase the capillary permeability then clinical manifestation swelling of the lip and tongue angio edema will be there wheezing stridor you can go flushing pruritus articaria you can go there will be a respiratory distress and circulatory failure will be there there are a management you know in the nursing way you know anaphylactic shock is very very important for practitioner when you see an anaphylactic shock don't stop with giving a prednisolone or a chlorpheniramine mediator or artery insulin you need to maintain the airway you need to intubate the patients and give the oxygen and maintain the with the fluid administration circulation we need so that airway the toxicity minimal breathing you know you can uh, so much more reduce the toxicity with the circulation you can eliminate the, the allergic response focus assessment as distribution you have to uh, check the all the vitals peripheral pulses check the level of consciousness check the capillary fluid tank and then uh, temperature you need to check uh, uh, color of the mucus membrane moisture level in the body urine output all those things you need to address so when there is allergy you need to be alert you need to address this issue on time then brief history you are need to collect whether it's a events leading to shock onset duration of symptom details of the cat received before hospitalization uh, which one is uh, the dog or the cat allergic to which drug you need to check recent vaccination detail you need to collect goals of our patients assurance of adequate tissue perfusion restoration of normal or baseline bp you need to check uh, the blood pressure of the patients uh, normally from 70 to 140 is normal less than 70 is uh, diastolic problem more than 150 is a systolic blood pressure so that has to be addressed and keep it within the normal limit 70 to 140 uh, return recovery of arguments avoidance of complications from prolonged states of hypoperfusion then uh, check the neurologic state orientation level of consciousness check the cardiac exercise by a continuous ecg monitoring check the capillary refill time hemodynamic parameters central nervous system pressure uh, then uh, artery uh, pulmonary artery pressures uh, cardiac output heart sounds whether the animal is having murmur all those things you have to check respiratory exercise respiratory rate rhythm you check it breath sound you check continuous pulse oximetry uh, measurement arterial blood gas only they, they have given enough information in the area most patients will be intubated and mechanically ventilated the animal with the respiratory failure we must have a knowledge on mechanical ventilation this itself uh, uh, you know we'll have another class about uh, how to use mechanical ventilator in a emergency situation what is the setting what is the flow what is the tidal volume what is the inspiration the expiration ratio and uh, based on the patient body weight what are the graph it will tell us how to give the better uh, comfort to the animals uh, suppose the you are giving uh, giving 100% oxygenation with the ventilator suppose the animal breathe on its own how to make the animal make the machine silent so that we can allow the patient to breathe so all those things uh, you know we will uh, discuss with the subsequent uh, emergency critical care classes and then uh, urine output checks pulmonary artery uh, you know pressure and temperature check skin temperatures uh, check whether they are having calor any cyanosis and uh, check the bowel sounds is also very important uh, these are all the nuts and information about the you know uh, shock and its management and uh, there are a uh, diagrammatic representations there are uh, uh, you know images 
there are uh, videos i will share it with uh, uh, dr tyagi uh, the managing director or the ceo of earth pharma he is the one instrumental in conducting uh, all this uh, series of webinar he is taking a uh, lot of pain and uh, he is having a good it team the it team is producing uh, all the uh, you know our uh, power points videos and then uh, there will be a lot of editing work and uh, now he is a veterinarian uh, cinematographer so all these uh, online uh, classes is uh, getting from us is compiling and you know uh, he then is releasing on time and uh, like that so there are lot of uh, hard work behind this so the practicing veterinarians when i was a student in dvsc mvsc or even phd i don't have this opportunity the expert is talking on uh, the subject so he is uh, providing this emergency critical care series i didn't even see in abroad you know so most of the programs are pay programs in abroad it will be in uh, several uh, under dollars so quite expensive when i went to uh, uh, canada wasawa program or some other exchange program when i go there there are uh, several program even even online they are all paid programs so quite expensive uh, so everything is getting it at uh, you know free so the listeners and the practicing veterinarian may student you make use of these are opportunities because we are giving all the information with our 25 years of hard work so you make use of this and then uh, you can do a better practice give a comfort to the animals uh, uh, talk to the pet parents uh, in a comfortable manner and uh, you can do a better things uh, for the dumb creatures with this i'll stop my presentation for placing order contact our sales team whatsapp at 9837253817 or visit www.hatbred.com thank you my presentations